So today is a day of hope and encouragement. It is a day of prayer. And uh, I want to make a couple quick announcements, and then we're going to uh, have our first prayer of the morning. Um, and, and the announcements are these. I don't know whether you may have heard this week that uh, Life Touch Studios has canceled all of their photography sessions uh, for the coming weeks. And so the planned directory portraits for this week, the photo sessions, have all been canceled and uh, postponed to a later date to be determined. And uh, when that happens, you will be the first to know. We thank Ted Soto for all the work that he has put in to getting us to this point, preparing us, preparing us and equipping us uh, for the session to come. The other announcement this morning is that um, we will be having in-person worship again this coming Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. You must register in advance. Today is the deadline to register, so you can do that online. Uh, check your email from the most recent announcements from the church, or go to our website where you'll find the link to register, or you can call the church office and leave a message, and we will uh, see that you are signed up for Sunday worship. Uh, everything you need to know about the worship on, uh, I'm sorry, for Wednesday worship, uh, everything you need to know is available on our website. This morning what I'd like to do as we uh, begin our time of worship uh, is to uh, clear, clear our, our hearts and our minds and uh, as we prepare to celebrate and pray over our, uh, our school system, 
uh, children and families and teachers and our facilities and so forth today uh, by going ahead and praying for uh, our circle of people, uh, those whom we know we need to lift up in prayer for healing uh, and for assurance and things like that. Uh, so let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you this morning that we can come to you in prayer today as we celebrate our children and families, as we celebrate our education system. And in order to clear our hearts and minds for those prayers of hope and encouragement and prayers for peace in this season, we begin this morning, O Holy God, lifting up to you the names of those who are on our hearts and minds, that we might put them in front of you this morning and place their care into your hands. We pray for the sick, we pray for the injured, we pray for the grieving, we pray for the lost and the lonely. And we pray for those that we name now, including John Thomas and Pat Murdoch, George Sawyer, Richard Witt, and Donnie C.'s sister, and those we name in our expanded circle of worship today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Pour out your spirit upon us to prepare our hearts for this time of worship. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Friends, I want to give you this piece of scripture this morning as we prepare to, to sing our songs of praise from Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7, the message translation. Paul wrote, Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. This is the passage in which he is talking about the peace of Christ, the peace that surpasses understanding. Friends, let us stand and sing our praise songs this morning. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus and God of wonders. Jesus, 
today? <laughs> hey, so uh, just, you know, you, you guys can't, um, can't see uh, what I see on Sunday morning. Um, Rachel Zorodka is here uh, the, again this morning. She does our technology for us uh, during this early service. Uh, she brought the wonderful sunflowers, the beautiful sunflowers today. And today is Rachel's 17th birthday. Is that right? Happy birthday, Rachel. <laughs> So today is, uh, today is our back to school Sunday in which we celebrate 
uh, our children and families and teachers and st school staff. And we celebrate them in a way that is um, prayerful. And so uh, this morning we'll have a series of prayers throughout our time together. And uh, we're going to begin this morning with our prayer for our children. So let us pray. God of wonders, we are grateful this day for the gift of children. Their energy and passion is inspiring. Their appetite for new things encouraging. Their boldness challenging. For all of this, for all of them, for that which makes each unique, we give you thanks. The new school year that is upon us is unprecedented. Distance learning via computers, internet, Zoom for kindergartners and college students. Hybrid classes of students physically present and virtually present. And we have so many questions as the new school year begins. What will we do about recess and lunch breaks? How will they learn to read? What about homecoming? Help us, God of wonders, to be patient for these things. These things will be revealed. Help us trust, for we are all in this together. Exploring, navigating, discovering together. God, in this unusual season, our prayer is that our students, our children, will be curious. May they thirst for knowledge and hunger for experience. May they develop confidence in themselves and relish opportunities to collaborate with peers. May they grow in their love of learning. This is our prayer for these, our children, and the classmates that they represent. We pray this morning for Ruby, who's going into the eighth grade, and Charlotte and Katie, who are fifth graders, Henry entering the fourth, and Nathan entering the third grade. We pray for Abby, who will be a high school junior, and Sophie, a sophomore, Grady, a high school sophomore, Rachel, who will be a senior this year, and David, a college freshman. We pray for Christopher, a high school senior, and his brother Benjamin, an eighth grader. We pray for Sally, entering the seventh grade, and Ryan, the fourth, Lily, a high school freshman, and Katie, entering the seventh grade. Hear our prayers, O oh God, for Grayson, going into the fifth, Owen into the third, Dinah into the second grade, and Haley entering kindergarten. Lord, we pray this morning for Abigail, beginning in kindergarten this year, and Jordan, who is a high school senior. We pray for Blake, a college junior, Etta in the third grade, and James entering the seventh. And God, we pray for the Kump family. Joe is continuing at Virginia Tech in a master's program, and Liz and her mom, Wendy, are both in the library and program at Longwood University. Lord, we pray for these and the children that they represent, their classmates, all over, not just their schools, but in all the schools across our community, our state, and nation. Almighty God of wonders, keep your children safe. Protect them from all threats to their health and safety. Guard their innocence. Guide their values. Gift them loving support. This we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Friends, let's go ahead and um, do our prayer for our teachers uh, while we're uh, in, this, in this mode, this prayerful mode this morning. Uh, and then the, choir, the uh, praise team's going to come back and uh, do another number for us. 
we have a number of teachers in our congregational community and uh, so we want to begin this morning praying for them and mindful that they are representative of uh, teachers in all of our schools and in private schools and public schools uh, from elementary school through secondary and collegiate and professional programs, not just in this community, but across the state and the nation. Let us pray. God of wonders, we give thanks this morning for the gifts and the call that you have placed upon the lives of teachers, their love of learning. Their love of learning is an inspiration to us all. Their love of children gives us confidence that by your grace, all will be well. This new school year is unprecedented. Distance learning via computers, the internet, and Zoom for teachers and their students. Some are teaching from home, others from empty classrooms, still others hybrid classes of students physically and virtually present. Or are they? <laughs> classes are about to start, and our teachers have so many questions. What will we do about recess? Will they come back from lunch breaks? How will they learn to read? It's all so different, and yet, from this trouble we have found and this rubble on the ground, we will rise because God who is in us is greater than we will ever be. This is both our hope and our assurance. Help our teachers, God of wonders, to have faith, to be patient. Help them trust, relying upon their vocational gifts and talents, drawing upon their years of professional experience, leaning on one another, for you have prepared them for a time such as this. May they lean upon us, their church family, for we are all in this together, exploring, navigating, discovering together. This is our prayer for these, our teachers, and their colleagues in every grade and subject matter in public and private schools and colleges whom they represent. Wendy Comp teaches the seventh grade of Elizabeth Davis Middle School. She's been teaching for about 25 years. Vicki Weber teaches eighth grade sciences at Falling Creek Middle School. Dawn Fallon is in her eighth year teaching special education. Shelly Smith, 25 years in elementary ed, teaching kindergarten at Betty Weaver Elementary School. And we add to this list Lori and Angie as well. Almighty God of wonders, keep your teachers safe. Protect them from all threats to their health and safety. Guard their dedication. Guide their values. Gift them with loving support. This we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Friends, I'm going to invite the praise team to come back now as they sing uh, a special number for us this morning, Rise.
Next Sunday, you won't want to miss this, friends. Next Sunday is Labor of Love Sunday. It's Labor Day weekend, and uh, we're going to be talking about labors of love, the things that we love to do, the places where our, our passion and our gifts and talents meet needs, and uh, how we celebrate those. And so we'll be sharing stories next week from uh, amongst the congregation. Some of our members of our Trinity family will be sharing their stories about their labors of love. And so you won't want to miss that. And uh, so lo I'm looking forward, looking forward to next Sunday. Um, so our scripture this morning is a single verse. It comes from the 10th chapter of Luke's gospel. Verse 5, Jesus said, Whenever you enter, how, enter a house, first say, May peace be on this house. Whenever you enter a house, may peace be on this house. This is hardly a normal school year, and I've been thinking this week about how in a normal year, uh, as we prepare to go back to school, we have um, a normal amount of joyful anticipation and anxious apprehension. We wonder about what we're going to wear, and will I have enough of the supplies and the right supplies? Will I get to see my friends? When will I eat lunch? And those are just the questions that the teachers have as they return to school. Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. 
So imagine in this year in which uh, there's this uh, increased anxiousness and anxiety around the unknown, the things that we um, are expecting and, and the things that we don't even know about yet to, that we may stumble across and just the challenges of uh, com teaching in a completely new and different way and learning in a new and different way. The potential for frustration and fear and anxiousness is exponentially, exponentially higher as this new school year begins. You guys, uh, you guys are from, know like about a, a, a herd of cows, right? Uh, if you've ever driven past a herd of cows, or maybe you grew up out in the country, or you've watched enough westerns on TV, you know that when one cow in a herd gets spooked, they all get spooked. It's like that anxiousness, just, it just spreads out amongst the whole herd. They all react to the anxiety of one. We're not unlike that kind of a herd of people. Remember the last church meeting you went to? If one person got anxious, that anxiousness just kind of spread out through everyone in the room. The last business meeting you attended, if somebody began to get upset or frustrated, the, the anxiety just sort of spread out throughout the room. Even in our families. The lawnmower didn't work right yesterday. The car wouldn't start. The golf game was terrible. And when that came back into the house, everyone in the household felt that anxiety. When Jesus sends out the 72 in Luke's gospel, he gives them instructions and guidance on what to do and how to go about the business of spreading the good news. And he says to them, whenever you first enter a house, say, may peace be on this house. He's offering a blessing. He's encouraging his disciples as they go about the business of preparing the way for him, spreading the good news, to extend the peace of Christ that Paul writes about in Philippians, to extend the peace of Christ into this new place, this new space. And, and he's doing more than that. Jesus is looking for people of peace. He's looking for people who will respond to the blessing of peace so that they too will become supporters of the ministry, that they will be supporters of the mission. We are people of peace. This is part of who we are and what we're called to do. And we know that, as we just heard in, in this last song, we don't do this alone. For the whole month of August, we've been talking about our connection as uh, a church and a people of faith. And we've talked about how nothing can separate us from the love of God and Jesus Christ. And we've talked about how we are not independent, autonomous, self-sufficient creatures. We are in relationship with one another and in relationship with God. And so to be people of peace in this very anxious season of a new school year beginning means we rely upon and draw upon the strength of one another and we rely upon this peace of Christ that surpasses our ability to understand it. By the grace of God, we become people of peace and we can change the herd. We can change the herd by the grace of God. So friends, here's what I'm asking you to do. And you know, normally I invite you to do things or I encourage you to do things. Jesus was very much an invitational sort of guy, right, in his ministry. And I try to emulate that. This morning I'm asking you to do something for, uh, for us in this community, in your community, wherever you live, for our children and our families and for our schools. I'm asking you to begin every day for the foreseeable future with that blessing. Peace be on this house. Start in your own home, laying in the bed first thing in the morning when, you, when your eyes open and you begin to process all that is before you for the day, to pause and say, peace be on this house. Or maybe you do it at the breakfast table as the family unit is gathering around and, and everybody's starting to get amped up about the day ahead. Peace be on this house. If you're going into a school, 
Say it as you enter the doors and say it as you enter the classroom. If you are teaching in a virtual classroom, wherever your, your new classroom is in your home, peace be on this class. Just like we're gathered here this morning. So friends, I want to ask you to do that and I want to extend that blessing to you now. Wherever you are, we are here together in this time of worship. And so peace be on your house. Peace be on this house. Amen? Amen. Our final prayer this morning in this season of... Um, back to school blessings this day of back to school blessings is for our families uh, families of students families of teachers uh, all of us because we are all in this together and uh, we can use some uh, extra blessings and tidings of peace in our lives right now so friends let us pray Almighty God, we know that anything is possible with you. We know that if we have faith, faith the size of a mustard seed, that you can move mountains. We know that you will use all things for your greater good. So on the eve of the opening of school, in this season of COVID, a season of uncertainty, a time of anxiousness, a phase of unsettledness, we pray to you, mighty God of wonders. We pray for our families of children in school. Comfort and assure them that all will be well. It may take some time for the routines to settle in, the questions to be answered, the anxiousness relieved, but all will be well, for we have faith in you. Pour out your spirit of peace upon these families, that they will be a source of confidence for their children a voice of calming support for their teachers, a presence of peace in their communities. God, we pray for families of teachers. Comfort and assure them that all will be well. It may take some time for the routines to settle in, the questions to be answered, the anxiousness relieved, but all will be well for we have faith in you. Pour out your spirit of peace upon these families, that their homes be places of rest and rejuvenation, sources of comfort and assurance, that all members of the teacher's family be filled with hope in this season, and where the teacher is a household of one, surround them with compassionate and supportive people of peace, neighbors, exercise partners, church members. We pray, Almighty God of wonders, for those families that are comprised of both teachers and students, both returning to school, have mercy on them. Fill these homes with love and peace and assurance of divine presence. Raise up grandparents in this season and tutors and others to provide stability and structure to each day where it is needed. Surround all of our families with supportive resources, understanding employers, and compassionate friends. We pray all of this in the powerful name of the resurrected Jesus. Amen. Friends, I'm going to invite the praise team to come for our sending song this morning, which is Unstoppable God. Just kind of an FYI for you, starting tomorrow morning, uh, our morning prayers, which are live in this space on Facebook Live at 8.30 a.m. Monday through Friday morning. This coming week, we're going to go on location. We'll be visiting local schools in the Chesterfield area uh, to offer blessings of peace uh, upon the facilities and all who come and go from them uh, for kids and families. So uh, be on the lookout for that starting tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. where we begin our week at Ecoff Elementary School. Let's stand and sing Unstoppable God. Heaven and thunder in the world 
was born. Life begins and ends in the dust we fall. Faith commanded in the mountains. Fear is losing ground and I hope to you. Unstoppable God, let your glory go. this blessing. This comes to us this morning from an, uh, an unknown source, but I liked it so much I thought I would share it with you today. It was the night before distance learning and all through the town, everyone was thinking, how will this go down? Students and parents and teachers all wonder, can I make this work? What if I blunder? Passwords, longings, logins, do I have it already? Easy now, take a breath, remember, be steady. There will be blips, there will be unknowns, but we're in this together. You are not alone. One day at a time, this is not a race, a new journey for all, so please give grace. Grace to yourself and grace to each other. We will get through this one way or another. Students want to learn and teachers want to teach. Families need to work, so it could be a reach. But the peace of Christ will guide us through this strange experience that is so new. We'll pray this blessing each in each and every space. The peace of Christ be on all in this place. Friends, may the peace of Christ be with you. Go in peace to be people of peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.